Hi kids, it's time for The Bible and You. And today's episode is... I hope you enjoyed episodes 1 to 6 and I'd like to welcome you to episode 7. So before I start this episode, if you haven't already watched episode 6, then please go back and watch that before you watch episode 7 because you'll, un- you'll be able to understand the concepts from today a bit better if you know what I talked about in episode 6. So in episode 7, we're going to carry on about uh, learning about what we talked about in episode 6. So in episode 6, if you remember, I talked about two mountains and how these two mountains represent the old and the new covenants. Now, uh, there is another passage in the Bible that compares the old and the new covenant to two women. And that's what we're going to look at today. And this portion is from the book of Galatians, so the epistle written to the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 21 to 26. So why don't we start by reading the verses and then I'll give a bit of background on, you know, on the book itself and also about the concept that we're going to explore today. So this is what the verse says. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the born woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. And answereth the Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So the book of Galatians was actually written to a group of believers, Christian believers, who lived in the city of Galatia. Now Galatia is not a city in Israel, it's a city that's outside of Israel. And if you remember from the previous episodes, any uh, people who are not from Israel or who are not Israelites are known as Gentiles. So the Galatian believers were actually Gentile believers. And they believed that Jesus was the Son of God. They believed that Jesus died for their sins on the cross. And they believed that through Jesus they can get into heaven. But there was this confusion where these people believed, although they believed Jesus, they also wanted to follow the law. And the book was written by Paul, the Apostle Paul, and he wrote this book to the church telling them the law is actually from the old covenant. You know, it was the old covenant had the law, but the new covenant doesn't. The new covenant is all about faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what he's trying to explain here. And to make that a bit easier to understand, Paul is using the example of two women from the Old Testament to explain what these two covenants are and what they mean for us, and also how they are related to the two mountains I talked about in episode six. So who are the two women that Paul mentions in these verses? He talks about Hagar, and then he talks about Sarah. So if you remember from episode 6, there are two mountains I talked about, right? Mount Sinai and Mount Sion. Now Mount Sinai represents the Old Covenant. That's what I said in episode 6. And Mount Sion represents the New Covenant. And here, Paul is making an additional um, example. So he's extending that a bit further. And he's saying, do you see how the Old Covenant is Mount Sinai? Now Mount Sinai is like Hagar. And the New Covenant... It's like Mount Sion, right? Or Jerusalem, the city of David. And Jerusalem, or Mount Sion, is like Sarah. So this is how he starts off making a comparison. So before we start looking at uh, what the rest of the things that Paul talks about in these verses, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who these two women are and, you know, which story they're from in the Bible and what it means for us in terms of the two covenants. So let's go back to the book of Genesis. So in the book of Genesis, everyone knows the story of Noah and the ark and the flood. So after Noah's, um, after the flood that happened during Noah's time, God chooses one man. He chooses a man called Abraham. And Abraham is 75 years old when God chooses him and he calls him. And Abraham has a wife called Sarah. And Sarah is 65 years old. So they're both very old. And God promises Abraham that he will give him a son. So that's the promise. And he says, you will have a son. And he's the son of promise. And Abraham and Sarah wait for a long time, waiting for the prophecy to be fulfilled. And time goes by, 10 years go by, and they still don't have a son. 
And so what happens is there is another woman, they have a slave girl called Hagar. So they decide, okay, uh, maybe when God said we will have a son, he didn't mean through Sarah. So they decide, Abraham decides to have a son through Hagar. That's the second woman that Paul talks about. So Hagar is a slave girl, uh, but Abraham has a son through Hagar and they call him Ishmael. But God visits Abraham after that when he is 99 years old and God tells him, look, you will have a son through Sarah. You will have a son through Sarah and he will be the son of promise. So Ishmael is not the son of promise. He is born through flesh. But um, Isaac, who will be the son that, that's born to you and Sarah, is the son of promise and he will be born through faith. Right, because at this point, Abraham is 99 years old, Sarah is 89, they're both too old to have kids, it's impossible, but God says, no, I have made a promise and I'll fulfill it as long as you believe in me. And Abraham believes God and they have a son the following year and when Abraham is 100 years old, Sarah is 90 years old, they have a son of promise and they call him Isaac. So these are the characters in the story. So just to recap, Sarah is Abraham's wife. Isaac is the son born to Sarah and Abraham, the son of promise through faith. Hagar is the slave girl and uh, Ishmael is the son born to Abraham and Hagar and he's the son born through flesh. Okay, so knowing this, knowing all of this, if we go back and read the verses from Galatians, there are a few things we can understand, um, you know, about what Paul is trying to say about these two women and, you know, the two sons and the two covenants. So first of all, um, Paul says, okay, so the old covenant, what was the old covenant? The old covenant is, as long as you obey the law, you can be near God. If you disobey the law, then you die. So this is what we looked at um, in the last episode. This is what God agreed at Mount Sinai, right, with the, with the Israelites. So this is a covenant made with the Israelites. In the new covenant, everyone who believes that Jesus died for their sins on the cross and that Jesus is the Son of God, they have free entry into heaven. And this is not just between God and the Israelites, this is between God and everyone who believes. So there are no exceptions. Everyone who believes, Jews, Gentiles, everyone, they have free access to God as long as they believe in Jesus Christ. So this is the new covenant. So Paul says, Mount Sinai, you know, which is the old covenant, is like Hagar. So in what way? What way is it like Hagar? So remember I said Hagar is a slave girl. So in the old covenant, everyone is a slave to the law, right? So this, the law is the one ruling the people. So as long as they obey the law, as long as they do what the law says, they're fine. When they disobey the law, then they become, uh, they, you know, they, they can be killed, they will die, and they, they have to move far away from, they, they move far away from God. So the law keeps them under bondage, it keeps them in slavery, just like Hagar was, um, you know, uh, was a slave girl. Secondly, he says, Everyone who follows the law and tries to come close to God through the law have to do this by, by their own works. They have to work, they have to make sure they don't break the commandments, they have to make sure they follow it or exactly word for word. And so the sons, that is the people who have this covenant, who are the people who have the old covenant, I mentioned already, this was between God and the Israelites. And the Israelites are God's people through the flesh, right? So God chose them and through Abraham and they are descendants of, uh, of Abraham and they became God's people because he chose them first by flesh. So anyone who is born to an Israelite family automatically becomes part of God, God's people, so through flesh. So they're like Ishmael because Ishmael was also born through the flesh. So anyone who obeys the law uh, and tries to be right with God through the law, they are first of all, they're in bondage like Hagar. Second of all, they are sons of the flesh, like Ishmael. Now, moving to the other side, the new covenant. So the new covenant is Mount Zion. So we saw that Jesus is the mediator in the new covenant, and he is the one who stands between us and God, and he, he brings us close to God when we believe in him. And this is Jerusalem. So here Paul talks about it as Jerusalem rather than Mount Sinai, which is the same thing. And Jerusalem is like Sarah. So what do we know about Sarah? We know that Sarah is free. She's not a slave. She's free. So anyone who comes to God through Jesus is not a slave to the law. They're free. They're not a slave to anyone or anything. They're, they're completely free. That's the first thing. The second thing, remember, Sarah had a son with Abraham. 
called Isaac. And Isaac, I said before, is the son of promise. So he was born through faith. So the new covenant is made with every single person who believes that Jesus is the son of God. So we become the people of God through what? That's right, through faith. When we believe in Jesus, we become people of God. So we, are, we become sons of God through faith, just like Isaac. So we are the sons of promise, okay? So these are the differences between the old and the new covenant, between Sinai and Sion, and between Hagar and Sarah. So keep in mind here, Paul said, anyone who tries to obey the law and become right with God through the law is a slave. He also goes on and talks a bit more about this, and that's what we're going to look at for the rest of the episode. So uh, Paul talks a bit more about this in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. So let's see what that verse says. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So this is what Paul says. So let's break that down. I'm going to read that again, but I'm going to make it simpler so it's easier for you to understand, okay? So let's read that verse again, but in a simpler, simpler version. We have freedom now because Christ made us free. So stand strong. Do not change and go back into the slavery of the law. So what is Paul saying here? What he's saying is we used to be in bondage to the law in the old covenant, right? Before Jesus died on the cross, the only way you could come near God or be right with God was by obeying the law and by doing every single thing that the law says. That was the only way. So the law had everyone as a slave. So everyone was slave to the law. But when Jesus died on the cross, he changed that. He, he made that the old covenant and he gave a new covenant. And in the new covenant, every single person who believes in Jesus is washed by his blood and he becomes justified or he becomes right with God through faith. So there is no, the law is no longer our master. We are not slaves anymore. We are free. So what Paul is saying here is, Jesus has already made you free. He has freed you from the law. So he died on the cross and he suffered so much and he shed all of his blood so that you can be free. So don't make the mistake of giving up that freedom and going back to become slaves of the law again because then there would be no point. Okay, so he goes on to explain this a bit more and he also explained this a bit more in Galatians chapter 3 verses 22 to 26. So let's see what those verses say. But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So again, this may be a bit hard to follow, but I'm going to read that again in a simpler version. So see if you can follow that. So Galatians chapter 3 verses 22 to 25. The scriptures showed that the whole world is bound by sin. This was so that the promise would be given through faith. And it is given to people who believe in Jesus Christ. Before this faith came, we were all held prisoners by the law. We had no freedom until God showed us the way of faith that was coming. So the law was our master until Christ came. After Christ came, we could be made right with God through faith. Now the way of faith has come and we no longer live under the law. So what Paul is saying here is, the law was needed before Jesus came. Before Jesus came, the law was our master because that was the way God had kept it. Until the new way, the new covenant was made, God uh, created the law so that people can use that as a way to come near him. But after Jesus came, the law has become old, not necessary. Now, God has made a new way. And the new way is faith in Jesus Christ brings you close to God. Faith in Jesus Christ makes you right with God. So if you give up faith, and if you say, okay, yeah, yeah, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, but I'm going to follow the law anyway, just to be sure then you're giving up the freedom that Jesus gave you and going back and making yourself a slave to the law, which is not needed anymore because God himself has made a new way. So why don't we do a quick recap of what we learned today. First of all, we looked at two covenants. So the old covenant that was made in Mount Sinai, 
in which it was made between God and the Israelites. And according to this covenant, everyone who obeys the law and does what the law says is made right with God. But whoever disobeys the law is moved far away from God or they die. The new covenant or Mount Zion. In this covenant, everyone who believes that Jesus died on the cross for them is made right with God and they can come to, near to God through Jesus Christ. And then we looked at two women, right? The two women who are like the two covenants. So Hagar, who is a slave girl and who had a son called Ishmael, a son through the flesh, who is the old covenant. And then we saw Sarah, who is a free woman and who had the son of promise, Isaac, who is like the new covenant. So how is Hagar like the Hagar and Ishmael like the old covenant? So everyone in the old covenant was a slave to the law, just like Hagar was a slave girl. And it was that covenant was only for the Israelites. So the sons of God through flesh. So everyone who is born to Israelite parents automatically becomes part of God's people. So that is by flesh, right? So everyone um, who in Israel or all the Israelites are like Ishmael because they're the sons of flesh. So they were under the old covenant and they were in bondage or they were slaves. And then we have the new covenant. So everyone in the new covenant is free because the law is no longer our master. The law is no, we are no longer slaves to the law. So we are like Sarah, who is a free woman. In the new covenant, we're all free. And then we are also like Isaac because Isaac was not a son of flesh. He was the son of promise born through faith. So we are also sons of God, sons of promise for God, and we become children of God through faith in Jesus Christ, just like Isaac. Now that we've been made free by Jesus' death on, death on the cross, we need not be slaves to the law anymore. So what we need to do now is don't go back to bondage, but believe that Jesus died for your sins on the cross and be made right with God through faith in Jesus Christ. I hope you found that episode useful and if you have any questions, please send them to this email address given below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel, Church of the Living God, for more videos. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.